We've been in this series called Poison Control, and we've been talking about all these different things that try and poison our purpose, poison our soul. And, and we need, as we start this year, we talked about a, a, a soul detox. We, a lot of people start off the year trying to detox their body or uh, change their body, but we need to also detox uh, our soul. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is detoxing and getting the poison out of our words. And if you go with me now to James chapter 3, James chapter 3, and at verse 3, uh, we're going to learn about that. It says, verse 3, when we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we could turn the entire animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by just a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the entire body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. It's just James getting like real intense. This is the, the brother of Jesus here talking about the, the power of the tongue. And he says, verse 7, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and lions, tigers, and bears, and sea creatures, and whales are tamed by men. And they've been tamed by mankind. But no human can be tamed, can, no human being can tame the tongue. The red little devil behind the pearly gates. <laughs> no. You guys need to wake up. A little delayed reaction. That's okay. It is relentless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And then with the tongue, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise, and out of the same mouth comes cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. This should not be. I want to title the message. I really like this title. I'm going to title it, The Muscle That Moves Mountains. The Muscle That Moves Mountains. Uh, what is the strongest muscle in your body? What is it? Do you have one? Count of three, just, this is what I want, you know, if you're able to, just stand up, just stand up, if you're able to, if you're able to, I know it's, it's a little chilly, it's okay, get the body moving a little bit, you know, I, I could, you know, get a, could do like a little warm up, have us warm up, do some, some air squats, some push ups, but I'm not going to do that, but what I'm going to do right now on the count of three, I want you to flex your strongest muscle, flex your strongest muscle. Muscle. Are you ready? Are you ready? On the count of three. So some, for some people, it might be, might be the quads. Might, you might have like just jack quads. It might be like, like traps, you know, traps the muscle up here, or biceps, or shoulders. Maybe your lats are, are your big. Like for me, for me, it's my shoulders. You know, like, like my shoulders save me because I have like the arms of an Ethiopian marathon runner. Like, like biceps, triceps, like no, I have none of that. But my shoulder, like that's my strongest muscle. Uh, so what's yours? All right, on the count of three, I want you to flex. One, two, three. Ah! I feel like I was the only one who actually... All right, you guys are no fun. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> so what, what, what is the strongest muscle? Um, the, the, the real, the strongest muscle actually is uh, what you're sitting on, your glutes. Your glutes. I was going to have a, uh, a competition, uh, and I was going to see who had the strongest glutes, and I was going to have, like, who could hold the squat for the longest, and I was going to give them a $50 Amazon gift card if you could hold a squat the longest. But because you guys are no fun, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save it for the second service. So you're just going to have to listen to me preach, and we're not going to have any fun. We're just going to be serious for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> This is the serious service, I guess. Uh, 
You know, so, so that's the, the strongest muscle is your glutes. But I, I think like, like the most unique muscle is your tongue. Tongue is a crazy, crazy muscle. It's actually four muscles in one. And it, I, I think it might not be the strongest, but it definitely has the most endurance because I, I've never, this is just me personally, my tongue has never gotten tired. Ever. I mean, my jaw might get tired, but my tongue, who's, I mean, your tongue never gets tired. It, it's, it's, it's an amazing muscle. And uh, spiritually, I believe that the tongue is the strongest muscle in our bodies. That you may have, you know, some big glutes, but your glutes cannot move mountains. Your shoulders cannot move mountains. Your biceps cannot move mountains. But the little red devil behind the pearly gates can move mountains or create mountains in your life. The tongue is amazing. Uh, I, I, you know, was with my wife last night. We were playing uh, um, this, this great game, Rummy, and I was like, can you do any, like, cool tricks with your tongue? Like, the only cool trick I could do with my tongue, I could do the taco. Anybody else do the taco? I know nobody can see your tongue because it's behind the mask, but, and then Diamond's like, you could do the taco. She goes, watch what I could do. And she did, throw the picture up, she did this, like, crazy, out of this world thing with her tongue. I'm like, how did you do that? That's the most, about, but people could do like, like some people could touch their, their nose with their tongue. That's amazing. Some people could lick their elbow. It's incredible. It's like a flexible muscle, uh, but it is a powerful muscle. It is the muscle that can move mountains. See, we are not a body with a soul. We are a soul with a body. And the Bible says in Proverbs that life and death are in the power of the tongue. The tongue, James says, is able to praise God, and it's also able to curse people out of the same tongue. I find it amazing that like, it's like nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin can be used to blow up bridges, but also if you have an achy heart, they'll give you a little nitro pill to help heal your heart. That it could blow up bridges and heal hearts. And the same is true with your tongue. It could blow up bridges, it could blow up people, or it could be used to heal hearts. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Which one represents you? You see, whatever you inhale affects what's inside of you. If you're a, a smoker, if you inhale smoke, it affects your lungs. In, in the same way, whatever you inhale into your spirit is going to infect your spirit. So what I'm going to do the rest of this uh, sermon is I'm really going to talk about two things. First, we're going to talk about the words that you allow to be spoken into your life. And then we're going to talk about the words that we speak out of our mouths into the lives of other people. So the first takeaway, the first uh, kind of point that I want to share with you guys is number one, guard your heart from poisonous words. Guard your heart from poisonous words. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 uh, says, says this. It says, above all else, guard your heart heart. Why? Because out of it flows all the issues, all the parts of my life. Guard your heart. See, you cannot control the words that are spoken over you. You can't control what somebody says about you, but you can 100% of the time choose the words that you believe about you. Guard your heart. I, I know we, we allow poisonous things many times to be spoken into our lives, and if you allow them to get into your heart, it will infect you, and then all of a sudden you're believing words over your life that are, simply are not true, but it is because you do not guard your heart. We guard everything else. 
You can't just walk into somebody's house. You got a lock on that door because you don't want people into your, coming into your house. You have a lock on your car. You have a lock on your phone. You have all these different things that you guard. But what guards do you have up to protect the most important part of your life, your heart? Do you just allow anybody to speak into your life? Do you just get upset and controlled by words that other people speak over you? What do you guard your heart with because people will say all sorts of things about you. They, they, they come up with this phrase, I don't know if you ever heard of it, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And, and that, that's simply just fugazi because I, I don't know about you, but I've had moments in my life when I have had an unguarded heart where I have allowed negativity and, and these things spoken into my life that hurt me and controlled me. And I began believing them about me because I did not have the right guard up on my heart. I remember moments, and maybe you do too, when people said to you that, that you're, you're, you're stupid, you're unimportant, you're trash. Uh, you know, maybe you allowed somebody to say to you, and this is like a frivolous one, you know, you know did you really mean to do that with your hair? Anybody ever say that to you? You know, you know. Did, why, why can't you be more like your brother? Anyone ever say that to you? You know, well, uh, or, or maybe it's when are you going to get a real job? And all of a sudden, the, these words that people speak and, and, and we allow them to sink in and we allow them to, to get inside of our spirits and inside of our souls, but what are you guarding your heart with? People starting this year, they say no to, to gluten. Anybody going no gluten 2021? Anybody? Anybody going, uh, anybody going no sugar? No sugar. Raise it high. Yep, yep. No sugar. Anyone going uh, no bread? No bread? Yeah, Teresa, you're just like an all-star. I love it. I love it. We say no to all these, no gluten, right? No bread, but yes to bitterness. <laughs> you know, no gluten, but yes to guilt. But above all else, above all else, above bread, above sugar, above, you know, suntan lotion that we like just douse our kids with in the summer, you know, it's amazing. If we protected our own heart as much as we protected our kids' skin, then we would have a much healthier heart and a much healthier perspective of ourselves because we guard everything else, but we don't guard our heart. But above all else, you need to protect the thing that God put inside of your heart. Protect the dream. Protect the passion. Protect that beauty, that purity that's on the inside of you, that purpose. Don't allow other people's words to poison what God has placed inside of you. Guard your heart. Because what's ever in your heart is going to come out. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I, I know what's in your heart by what you say. Well, I just say what I feel. Well, you're going to end up feeling what you say. Because whatever you say is going to come back around to you. So if you start talking trash about yourself or about how much you hate or despise that person, well, you know what? That is always going to be how you feel about yourself and how you feel about other people. And you need to stop talking about and saying how you feel, and you need to start speaking how you want to feel. Because if you want to feel healthy and you want to feel strong and you want to feel important and you want to feel loved, then you need to start letting those words come out of your mouth because what comes out of your mouth is going to come back to you like a boomerang, baby. See, if you want to change the destination of your life, you need to change the declaration of your mouth. I'll say that again because it was just so good. If you want to change the destination of your life, you need to first change the declaration of your mouth. If you want to change your world, it starts by changing your words. Mark chapter 11, verses 12. It says, the next day Jesus was leaving Bethany and he saw at the distance a fig tree and it had leaves on it. He wanted to see if he could get some fruit. He wanted to see if he could get a fig. And so he looked and there was nothing on the tree. And then verse 14, he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. Jesus said that. And then it says, verse 20, the next, uh, the, the ne that same chapter, it says, In the morning when they went along and saw that same fig tree, Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, 
the fig tree you cursed has withered because your words have power. Your words can move mountains. Your words can create mountains in your life. And, and then Jesus said, have faith in God. I tell you, if anyone says words to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you begin to build up your heart and guard your heart, then all of a sudden the words that you begin to speak will begin to speak life and begin to change the world around you. And it says, whatever you say, if you believe in your heart, it will happen and it will be done. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have already received it and it will be yours. And when you stand in prayer, and if you hold anything against anybody, forgive them. That means before you need, can ever receive forgiveness, you have to first give it. Hateful things can destroy you. I'll never forget when I first started preaching, I uh, had a, a, a group of people that said very negative things about me as a pastor. I was very young, and, and when you first start out in something, you can be very impressionable. You know, after a while, you can start to build up some confidence, and, and you've been doing it for a while, but, but early on, you can be so vulnerable. That's why, especially early on in a dream, or early on in a relationship, or early on in, in something that you're pursuing, you need to be very, very careful about the voices you allow to speak into your life, especially early on. And I remember early on, uh, there was a group of people that, that, that said very negative things about me as a pastor, and, and they began to be very critical of me, and they began to examine every word that I said, and, and, and they, they, they said certain, and it was things that were on the internet. Anyone ever seen something on the internet said about you or about something, and it just pierces your heart. It's not necessarily the words that you hear, but sometimes it could be the words that you read. And I'll, I'll never forget, I was reading these words that were written about me, and, and it began to just seek into my heart. Like, like, wow, is this really what God wants me to do? Is this really a gifting that God has given me? Because if, if, if this is what I'm going to get, if this is what people think, then maybe, maybe it's really not God's will. And I'll never forget, I had a dream, and, and I, I, I have heard the, the voice of God, the audible voice of God. You want to know how many times I've heard it? One time. I'm not that kind of guy that, like, I wake up in the morning, God's talking to me, like, hey, how you doing? I was like, I'm doing good. Why don't you go get, like, like, that's not me. Maybe that's you, but that's not me. You know, I get leadings by the Holy Spirit. I hear God's voice through other people and through God's word. Uh, but hearing the audible voice of God, I get real freaked out when people tell me they hear, you know, I heard from God every other sentence. Like, really? So you just didn't hear from yourself and put the God card on it? You know, that's a whole nother sermon. Uh, but it, it was this one time, I, I, had a, I had this dream. And it was a dream of uh, this uh, giant brass, like, like, like it almost looked like a Buddha, um, you know, giant, you know, image that was in the middle of the road. And this car went, went to hit it. It was in the middle of the road. And when the car went to hit it, the car just like imploded. And the statue didn't move. And I woke up and I was like, that was weird. And then I fell back asleep. And right when I fell asleep, I heard the Lord speak to me audibly. Do not be moved by what other people say about you. Only hear my voice. And no matter what hits you, you will be left standing. It's the only time I ever heard that. And that was exactly what I needed to hear. And, and if God said that to me, he said that for you. Don't be moved by what other people speak over you. Be moved by what God says about you. Be moved by what God speaks over your life, that you are chosen, you are called, that you are resilient, that you are important, that, that even though you've been through trials, God will use them to bring forth his glory in your life. Do not be discouraged by the opportunities that you miss, but be excited about the opportunities that God has a place before you today. Today is a new day. Hear God's voice above all others. And then secondly, I want to talk about guarding your own mouth. You need to guard what other people say over you, and you also need to guard what you say over you and over other people. Another takeaway I want you to remember, having a tongue means you have a responsibility. I uh, recently 
I uh, went to uh, go purchase a firearm uh, to protect my home, and, and uh, I, I went and, and to, to shoot a gun with Anthony Telford last year, and I like, was like, oh, this is pretty awesome, you know, and I want to protect my family, so I went to register and, and got a gun, and, 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 and the, 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 the amount of checks and balances and different classes and all these things you have to go through in order to get a, a gun is like ridiculous. It's unbelievable, but, but rightfully so. Because you're, you're, being, you're allowed to carry something that can be very dangerous. And, and you have to go through all these different you know, classes and, and checks and balances. But you know what's more dangerous than a gun? Is a tongue. A tongue is way more dangerous. And you all have one. And we don't have to go through any classes. or we, we, we have people walking around with weapons of mass destruction every single day. And you don't understand, I don't understand many times the responsibility that we have with the tongue that is in our mouth and the words that we say matter. The words that you speak over yourself matter. The words that you say over your children matter. The words that you say over people in authority matter. The words that you say about God matter. Every word that comes out of your mouth is powerful enough to move a mountain. Every time that you say something disrespectful or you say something uh, and you gossip about somebody else, and, and you, you want to talk down to somebody else, or you want somebody else to feel bad, or, or you want yourself to feel bad or feel guilty. All these words that you speak matter. They have power to move mountains or create mountains. Your words can put out a fire or throw gasoline on it. Listen to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 18. It says, like a manic shooting flaming arrow, is one who deceives their neighbor by, says, by saying, I'm only joking. <laughs> that one got me. Because I've done that so many times. I've said something, and then, oh, I'm only joking. Like thinking that by us saying, I'm only joking, all of a sudden takes away. It's like saying, you know, with all due respect, uh, you are the ugliest human being I've ever seen. But I said with all due respect. You can't just say anything you want after you say I all, with, out of all due respect. You know, like, like just by saying you're, I, I was joking doesn't mean the words that you said didn't hurt the person that you said them to just because now you said I'm only joking. No, 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 no. You need to guard your mouth. And, and then it, it says, without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Do you know what? Th this is like a pet. I just... Let me go off a little bit here. One of the biggest pet peeves that I despise about church people is when they say, man, we really need to start praying for Nicole. Oh, my gosh. Did you see what she put on Facebook? I mean, we, I mean good. Lord, we need to start praying for her. And, and, and <laughs> you gossip about somebody, but you think it's okay because... Well, we need to pray for them. Nobody's praying. <laughs> Nobody's praying. We're just talking about praying over somebody that you don't like or said something that you don't like. And, and, and then uh, all it is, is is gossip being cloaked with the God card, which I think is worse than anything else when you try and put God on, on something that he hates. He, he's looking at you like you are a fool. And, and, and you know what? what? What goes around comes around. And if you start speaking those things, what you are doing is you are putting a curse on yourself. Stop it. Knock it off. Turn to somebody around you and say, knock it off. Stop gossiping. And saying you're praying for people. Driving your pastor crazy. <laughs> your words are so powerful. And right now, and I guess it's just kind of been the way it's been forever, is, is all these fires that we see in life are created by little words that we say, are created by a tongue that says something and is believed by people. And all of a sudden, out of that one phrase, death, destruction, hate, you think about just going back, I mean, you think about the Holocaust. Two million Jews murdered. Why? Because of one tongue saying, Jews are not people. And then all of a sudden, 
when people started to believe that, they looked at somebody not as a human being, but as an animal. And out of that, they thought it was okay to do horrible things to them because of a tongue. Because of a tongue, we saw something in this country and many others called slavery when we thought a person could be a property or somehow they aren't created as equal as me or as another person. And because of a word that was spoken and believed, people actually thought that that other person is my property, which means I could do, it, it all came from a tongue. It all came from a tongue to, I mean, you look at how could anyone ever abort a, an eight-month-old child. I mean, that's a human. But, but it came from a word that was spoken that it's just a fetus. It's not a, it's just a fetus. And when they began to believe that, then it wasn't murder. It was just a medical procedure. Words can do damage. Words can destroy. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you speak over yourself. Be careful what you speak over others. Be careful of what you allow to become truth in your life. Because what you believe about you and others matter. The reason we use these words to hurt other people is because inside we feel small. And we think that if we could somehow make them feel small, then somehow that'll make me feel bigger. But if all you're doing is throwing mud, then all you're doing is losing ground. If all you're doing is throwing dirt, then all you are is getting smaller and shorter. Guard your mouth. Well, I, I guess, honey, we got to get the swear jar out. You know, guard your mouth. No more F-bombs. No, no, uh, no, no more. What, what, are, what are other ones? Don't say them. Don't say them. You know. Oh, you, you got to watch out. No, th that's not what this sermon, I mean, you should not be saying those words, BT Dub. But you could be cursing and not swearing. See, some of the most harmful words are not four-letter words, but, but it is cursing others with your mouth. And you, you could not say one swear word over somebody, and you could belittle them and make them feel unimportant. And even your body language and your eye contact and the way you make other people feel, you could be cursing them with your body language and your mouth. It matters what you say. Guard your tongue. And then... Lastly, I want to, want to say this. Speak life-giving words every chance you get. Is this good? Are you guys getting anything? This is the, this is the, the boring service. I need some feet. Am I doing okay? Speak life-giving words every chance you get. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, listen to this. It says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Don't let, any un don't let anything unwholesome come out of your mouth. I, I mean, I, I try my best to surround myself with people that are encouragers. You know, my wife, I'm so thankful. My wife, she builds me up so much. And you know what? I never get enough of it. Like you think, oh, I don't want to tell them to the, that. I don't, I don't want to tell them that they're so special. It might go to their head. Or, or the problem with this generation is they think they're all snowflakes and they think that they're God's gift to earth and they think that they're so special. You know, I think the problem with this generation is that they don't know who they are in Christ and they don't know how special and important they are. And because of that, it produces an act that is not God's will because they don't know who they are in Christ. We need to speak life over every single person. I don't care if it goes to my kids head that their dad loves them or dad thinks that they're the most beautiful, perfect, amazing thing in the world. I don't care. The other day I, I, I had this game. I was playing with my kids. It was this awesome game. We started playing called Truth or Trash. 
And, and what, what I do is I, I speak something, and they have to tell me whether it's truth or trash. And, and if it's truth, it's what God says about them. If it's trash, it's what the devil says about them. And it's awesome. I was playing with, with, with Lily, and I go, you know, Lily, what, what's this? You are uh, the most amazing, beautiful person in the entire world. And she's like, that's truth? That's truth, Daddy? That's truth? That's truth? I'm like, all right, all right, all right. You, Lily, you know, you're, you're stupid. Nobody likes you, and you have weird hair. That's trash, Daddy. That's trash. That's from the devil. That's not from God. That's from the devil. That's trash. And, and she was getting so into it. That's truth, Daddy. That's truth. Yes, I am beautiful. I am important. I am special. And I'm like, that's what we need to do every day is when somebody speaks over us or even when we speak over ourselves, we need to filter it through. Is this truth or is this trash? And if it's trash, you know where to throw that. The toilet bowl, baby. When my dad passed away, I had so many people coming up and telling me all these amazing things about him, all these amazing things that my dad did for them and, and how special my dad was to them. And there was one person that came up to me, and he had known my dad for a long time. And when he was young, he started coming to the church. My dad was young, too. He said he was, he was suffering from just depression and just suicidal thoughts, and, and he hated himself, and he started coming to Shore Christian Church. And he, he, he befriended my dad, and my dad started meeting with him, and he owned a business in, in, in Avon. And he started just sharing with my dad how, how much he, he hated himself. He went through things as a child, and, and my dad saw that this was real. This was you know, something he was really going through. And my dad had him write down all these great things about himself. And he said, he, at first he couldn't really think of them, but the more him and my dad, you know, uh, were talking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good softball player. He played on the softball team for the church. And, and uh, you know, people like me. I'm funny. And, and uh, you know, I call my, my mom every Mother's Day. You know, like all these just, just little things. And and uh, he, he, he was telling me how, you know, after a while he got so into it that he ended up writing like, like 50 different things down. And, and then he told me that he kept the piece of paper for so long. And then he said years went by and he ended up losing connection with the church. And, but he never lost that piece of paper that him and my father put together. And then he said years later he was able to come back. And uh, he came back into a service and and he sat with my dad, and he was now married at this point. He had kids. He had a career. He was a homeowner, successful. And he goes to my dad, and he says, you know what? What you did for me changed my life. Because eventually, what I was writing down went from the paper to my heart. And every day I began living those things that we wrote down together, and it changed my life. And he said to me, your father changed my life because of what he spoke into me, because of the words that he spoke over me. I began to see myself not based on how I felt, because if you always speak how you feel, you are always going to get what you feel, and your feelings are as fickle as the seasons of life. But if you could begin to speak over yourself, even if you don't feel it, even if you feel depressed, even if you feel like giving up and you're afraid and you feel like people are out to get you, if you could speak how you want to feel, eventually you're going to begin to see that manifest. It's amazing. Psychologists will tell us that when you speak words of hope and you speak words of positivity and you speak words of encouragement over yourself, that your body naturally releases dopamine and serotonin into your body. The same things, the same drugs they use in antidepressants that are, you know, over the counter that people get addicted to are actually released in your body when you begin to speak life over yourself. You don't have to go on medication the rest of your life. Many times you just have to change what you say about yourself and about other people and all of a sudden your world will begin to change. Guard your heart and guard 
your mouth. Your tongue can move mountains. Amen. Amen. If you're able to, just stand to your feet right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. just bow our heads right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you that you look down at us and, and you see good things. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and to give you a future. God, I pray that we could begin to tame our tongues. That we could begin to speak and type things that build others up. Lord, I pray that we will have mercy in our mouth, Lord God. Lord, I pray that we will guard what other people say against us, Lord God. We will always filter what somebody else says over us through your word. And we will hold your word above any other word, Lord God. This message was for you when you say, you know, I, 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 need, I need a detox in my, in my mouth. I, I need to receive a new way of speaking over myself and over others. Count of three, I just want you to lift up your hand right now. One, two, three. Lord, you see these hands right now, Father. Father, number one, forgive us for what we have spoken over other people and over us, Lord God. Forgive us, Father. And maybe there might be some people that I need to ask forgiveness from that I've said hurtful things to out of emotion. And I, I pray, Lord God, you give me the courage to to ask for forgiveness, Lord God. I pray that I'll forgive myself for the things that I've spoken over my life. Sometimes I'm, I'm my own worst enemy. And when I'm alone, I begin to, to, to begin speaking what other people have said about me that is not according to your will, Lord God. I pray, Father, that I will begin to speak those things that be not as though they are. That I will begin to, to, to speak with my mouth, Lord God. The, the ability and have the ability to move mountains of depression, mountains of anxiety, mountains of fear, mountains of hurt will be moved in the name of Jesus, will be moved out of my heart. Mountains of bitterness can be moved in Jesus' name. Mountains of pride. If pride is your problem, then humility is your solution. Thank you, Father.